Hey, what is up, guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Racer Star PGA 35 amp ESCs. Now, this is some of the new trends that are going for slim ESCs nowadays. Now, there's no filtration on board except this massive low ESR capacitor in the back, and it is a 25 volt 330 microfarad low ESR capacitor, which is, to be honest, a must to have. Now, this is a BL Heli 32 ESC with no telemetry and no current sensing, so take that into consideration. So, it can run D Shot 1200. And it's rated up to a 6S, theoretical 6S. The Fest look pretty small. I wouldn't recommend running a 6S. I would stick to a 4 and possibly a 5S. For my kind of liking, I would just stick to a 4S. So let's quickly take some of its measurements here. Its width is 10.7 millimeters. Board length is 36.77 millimeters without the low ESR capacitor. Width capacitor is 52.39 millimeters. Now they are using silicone wires everywhere, which is really nice. And they also have this really nice fat heatsink. It's a pretty massive one as well. So that's really nice. And like I mentioned, there's no filtration on board. And that's all I can currently say. So enough talking, let's just get testing. All right, guys, so the results are in for the Razer Star PGA 35 amp ESC. Now, forget that I put PGA 30, it's because I kind of forgot when I was doing this. All right, so let's take a look at this. Now, this ESC is super slim, and the pads for soldering motor wires are a little bit smaller than usual, but I mean, you only have so much space on this. First, on the left side, if you're new to the channel, this is the throttle noise level test. Uh, this can you can see if the, the ESC can, uh, can introduce uh, mid throttle oscillations through its noise because usually around 75% throttle is the most noisiest. As you can tell here, it's really clean. You want to see these lines as flat as possible. So on the left side, we have the throttle noise level test, 10% throttle, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100% throttle here. Both of these are exactly the same on the left, and on the right is the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. Now, if you take a look here, this is a perfect result, basically, because of that low ESR capacitor that comes pre-installed into the ESC itself, even though it's taking slightly longer area, but it still performs really well. The motors did sound smooth. I didn't have any weird jitters or any hiccups on low throttles, which is something really good to see here. So far, it's testing good here. Now, let's take a look at the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers. This is actually testing really good with a low ESR capacitor, which is really nice to see here. And to be honest, I was expecting, even though it had a low ESR capacitor, remember, there's barely no filtration on the board itself so there's some magic sauce going on with this thing here that is performing like this however these are a little bit weird here i couldn't really tell what these were they, they kept happening but you can't hear it and you can't see it so uh this is this is kind of strange for me here this is when it was uh let's just say immediately pushed up full throttle it would do these little jitters here uh, but this is, you know, this is really not, it's something very minute that you won't even notice, but um, it's still a really, really good result, actually. So let's start comparing it. Let's put other things on the radar here. Now let's take a look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in, let's just say, let's just bring in the Tico 32 ESC without a, without a low ESR capacitor first. So if we take a look at this, as you can tell here, it's performing as good as a Tico 32. Let's actually bring in the colored version, which would be a little bit better. There we go. All right. So as you can tell here, it's performing as good as a Tico 32 for a uh, normal standalone ESCs. Now the Tico 32 is without a low ESR capacitor. It's just default setup with uh, with no capacitor, just how it comes out of the box. And if we actually compare these two on the throttle noise test, the, 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 the racer star seems to be actually winning because you want to see these lines as thin as possible. This is pretty crazy what one low ESR capacitor can do. 
Now, all I can tell you is they use the premium low ESR capacitor. That's why they're performing really, really good here. Now, let's take a look at something else. Here's the Sunny Sky R45s, and these are 6S monsters here. Uh, they tested really, really nice, actually. So let's grab the throttle noise level test. And as you can tell here, uh, I don't have a test with a low ESR capacitor on these, but these are the, the, the Sunny Skies. So, and I did not want to remove the capacitor off the Racer Star because there's no filtration on board. And that's how it comes out of the box. It comes pre-installed. As you can tell here, out of the box, you're going to get better performance. Um, is it is it is it going to last longer? Is it going to handle a lot more? I can't answer that through this test, but it didn't burn like the Hobby Wing did. So that's that's something really good to see here. Um, so yeah, it's performing really good, especially with the, those ESR capacitors installed. And um, seems like a pretty good one. I'll probably set it up on my ESC testing quad and take this out for a real world test. And uh, with some Emacs 2306 2400 KV motors, I think those this is like the the standard noise level test for me in real world testing and some kind of a flight controller that has no uh, voltage regulator for the VTX, which would be the Skyzone F4. That's what I use for my ESC testing quad. So overall, these ESCs are performing really nice here on the bench testing. The bench testing is making it basically one of the top ESCs currently, which is pretty insane. And um, yeah. Well, if you pick some up, I think you're going to have a good time. And uh, if anyone has any experience with them or use them, please let us know down in the comment section. Overall, in bench testing, they seem good. Real world testing, we'll have to wait. And then we'll take them out in another day. But overall, yeah, they're really nice here. And, well, that's all I got to say, guys. So if this was really helpful to someone, if I did help you purchase something or to avoid something, please consider joining my Patreon to help to keep this channel going. I need all the support I can get to keep the channel actually running. And um, you can also use the links down below. Those greatly, greatly support the channel. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And if you need any help, hit up DroneMeshForum.com, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.